Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back for those who have been joining me on this. And if you're new, we're getting turned up on this Taco Tuesday. The market is doing great. That's why we're starting off on this screen first because, wow, let's refresh, see where we're at. Oh, we're getting so close to that $50,000 Bitcoin. You know, like I said, these numbers are just artificial psychological constructs that people have. More importantly, you see, oof, boy, Cardano about to hit $3, though. Uh, man, everything. We'll come back later in this. This We are um <laughs> we'll look at that later in the show we won't get just lost into the numbers it is a good thing to see though the market capitalization the entire market is up that is very very important um hope everyone well let me see correct see i correct myself sorry i know everyone is doing well here we're about that positivity and that means if there's someone you love or my respect and you want to give them a boost in their day, go ahead and write something nice about them in the comment section. Then forward them this video and say, go in there and look and see what I wrote about you. Pal of mind, lover, uh, mentor, mentee. With that, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with some crypto today. Legal expert, crypt, Treasury Department plans to quote unquote capture DeFi. So this is this guy known to butcher his last name, Jake Shervinsky. He is the general counsel for Compound and DeFi's chairman of the Blockchain Association declared that infrastructure bills have blindsided the industry through cryptocurrency tax provisions. And this this article is not the best written, but You know, we'll 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 make our way through it. Here you talked about how Steve Muninchin, previously the Treasury Secretary, looked for ways to force self custodied cryptocurrency wallets. It all links to DeFi. The Treasury Department wants to solve the problem of gaining control over DeFi as well as to enlarge its warrantless monitoring of peer to peer financial structure. According to Shervinsky's I think I'm saying it right. We'll just call him Chairman Jake for now. Chairman Jake, he got the initial information that the department previously resisted exempting software developers and network validators from strict third-party reporting conditions under the bill since the amended legislation may not capture DeFi adequately. So, in other words, a lot of that language that, that caused individuals who were just validators and you know, here they say, you know, it's basically they couldn't exempt the proof of stake validators versus the miners of proof of work. And because they know that the validators in the proof of stake, well, he thinks, you know, he said he may be a little paranoid, but he thinks that behind the scenes, someone is smart enough to know that it's going to be a lot more money coming from the DeFi space and proof of stake over time. So they're trying to figure a way to, to keep their their paws and their mitts amongst the money. But one thing, good thing came out of it. This fight brought together the entire crypto industry in DC. And they talked about that, that the entire crypto industry joined hands to uh, work together in this one, in this battle. Bitcoin versus real estate, which is the smarter investment? And right here, you can tell this person does not know what they're talking about. Bitcoins are not like conventional currency. So, but we're not going to knock them for that. I mean, they, it's a lot of things that they get wrong, but it's a good, you can tell they, they've been doing their research and they're trying to put together a plan to explain this to either themselves or other people. So we'll read some of it, but we'll point out the problems. And if you don't know, the... Plural is like saying Mises for or Mies for uh, moose. You know, the plural of Bitcoin is Bitcoin, period. There is no such thing as Bitcoins. So when someone say that, they're not that clear on at least the Bitcoin protocol. I'm not sure how they are on other cryptocurrency, 
but at least on the Bitcoin protocol. In any case, Bitcoin is one of the most known forms of digital cryptocurrency is currently used for purchasing goods and services online, provided that both parties are willing and able to do so. Smaller units around a hundredth of a million or eight zeros and then one after the decimal place of one Bitcoin are called Satoshis. And so one one millionth, no, 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 one one hundredth millionth of a Bitcoin is a Satoshi. And that is the lowest possible thing. You know, that's good for people to know they don't understand. And this rate talking about they they actually created by users through mining, which means that a person solves person they solve it nothing. You know, the, you know, the device. And yesterday I said it was the algorithm specific is application specific integrated circuit, which is the ASIC, which means that a person solves some complex math based puzzles to earn bitcoins. Bitcoin is then stored inside a digital wallet which can is not necessarily on a smartphone, computer, or cloud. It can be off completely cold storage, completely off. A device off of the any anything, cold storage. Where can you go? At? Blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get into all this. He said, well, mining was the way to get the original Bitcoins. <laughs> like, you can't still mine to earn Bitcoin. We talked about that yesterday. Yes, you can still mine to earn Bitcoin. And but all right, I'm not, I'm not gonna knock it. So these are the strengths he gives us: decentralized, not controller regulated. It provides anonymity, you know, relatively in the sense that you are um, your public key in terms of transactions, and if people can put the public key with your personal, then that's a different story. But for the most part, you you know, you're just a string of numbers and letters. Uh, and it's transparent that everything is stored forever on the blockchain. We all can see it. And that's what's awesome about it. But he said the um, it's easy to get into. The prices have been going up. It's fairly secure. We're talking about specifically Bitcoin versus other cryptocurrencies. High liquidity. You can sell your Bitcoin anytime. Fixed supply. 21 million, bit, 21 million Bitcoins. Bitcoin. And then the downsides, it could be a bubble. Yeah, okay. A security risk, which is, you know, you could get hacked. Uh, if you leave your money on the exchange, the exchange could get hacked. So that's why we're going to talk about operational security and long-term planning, how to be the stewards of our own as much as possible destiny and understanding what is going on with, you know, in our retirement accounts, understand what decisions are being made. Is that maximized or is it set up for, or, you know, for you to, to always be stuck in a system? Because a lot of what they tell you is that, oh, no, we want you to be, we want to protect you. And that means keep you stuck in the system. So you got to be careful, security, malware, operational glitches, you know, double and triple checking your work, make sure you know your passwords in, in several ways, not just, oh, I'll remember it. These things you do not do. You've, you've all, we've, we've all heard the stories at this point of individuals who lost their passwords or threw away a device. You, you know, when you take these, when you take these steps to, you, you have, you know, like I said, when you're trying to generate when you're trying to create generational wealth, you have your generation on your back. So you got to, it's a sense of responsibility. You can't be all willy nilly out here. Uh, high volatility, the price does go up and down. We see it with this, and everybody goes crazy whenever it does. But the price does tend to go up and down with Bitcoin, and people lose their mind. Talking about government regulations can come, the possibilities of a ban, and you can. They can try as much as possible, but, you know, at the end of the day, anyone who doesn't get is going to get, if they don't get down, they go get laid down, as they say. And let's see how those bands work out in India and Iran. In Iran, I know both India and Iran are were just trying to gain control of the amount of cryptocurrency in, in the uh in their border because Iran, I know, took over the the mining and now kind of like has a tax on and control or, you know, allow mining. But long as they get get they they get their cut of it, like everybody. 
no controlling party. Like you can't go to cry to anybody. That's Bitcoin. Hey, hey, you can't get on the phone and call Bitcoin and say, hey, I sent my money, uh, my Bitcoin to the wrong address by mistake. It doesn't work like that. Versus real estate, they said back in a tangible asset, which, you know, you're right. Land or building or something is tangible. Gaining a means of income, rental property could be. And actually, look, you know, we'll, we'll get to it at the end. Provides a buffer against inflation. These are the advantages of real estate. Gaining many tax benefits. You get a lot of tax benefits by owning real estate for uh, insurance, depreciations, repairs, cheaper mortgages, especially now with the mortgage rates have been and options like buying a large piece of land, buying uh, multifamily units commercial properties there's there's options as well the downsides high cost of transactions need need quite a bit of money to enter the field of real estate low level liquidity it takes a while to sell from months if not years to pro, uh, the the properties maintenance costs slow increase in value these are the downsides of investing in real estate here you know the author here was said oh I, I would still pick real estate it's safer or and actually says some smart they was saying or maybe a hybrid of investing in cryptocurrencies using diversifying some of the gains from the cryptocurrencies to purchase real estate so that way it offsets some of the costs on, and we'll, we'll talk at one point you know about buying real estate and the, the other options because the upset to offset some of the costs of purchasing properties themselves you can uh, buy into rents real estate investment trusts where basically like etfs exchange traded funds where you can just buy a piece of a corporation who's doing that already and the beautiful thing about rents versus a lot of other different funds is that 90 percent of their profit has to go back to the investors is set up in the law so we'll get to that at you know what at what point you know buying properties rental properties buying properties flipping them versus investing in rents you know things to think about and there's always a lot of things to think about when you have different world partners who had different views on how things need to get done and they look and they probably all we all look at each other and think the exact same thing you would imagine but here over 560 billion wiped out from china markets within a week as regulators clamp down shatters confidence more than 560 billion in market value has been wiped off hong kong and mainland china mainland china exchanges in a week as funds capitulate out of once favored stocks unsure of what sector regulators will target next Stocks in Shanghai also fell while investors sold risky corporate debt in the Chinese currency. The win, the, the yen, did I say that right? No, yen is um, Japan. The yuan, digital yuan. The yuan, I think I'm butchering that too, was posed, posed, po, po, poised for its biggest weekly loss in two months as investors rushed to safety amid global coronavirus concerns. This talked about that Alibaba, Tencent, a lot of these groups uh, have been selling off. They actually did well a little bit in America, but over in China, they lost almost a, over a half a trillion off their market because they have been cracking down. This week alone, China announced tougher rules on competition in the tech sector, summoned executives at property developed Evergrande to warn them to reduce the firm's massive debt. And state media reported looming regulations for liquor makers, a favored tipple for foreign fund managers. China, and the thing that what has really been sending the, the spooks through the entire market over there in China is that they don't know what sector is next to be targeted by the regulators. There's a herd mentality at the moment, said Louis Singh, managing, I may butcher that, say, the managing director of Hong Kong. 
not maybe I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering all of these names. Managing director of Hong Kong brokerage, wealthy securities. People see one person selling, then they do the same. Her mentality. Her mentality. So when it drops, then I mean a smart thing to do and live, remember and know that this is never medical advice, relationship advice, financial advice, economic advice. Advice about, is this advice or advice not about? But there's going to be a bottom, and then when that bottom hits, don't catch a falling knife. So that means when prices are dropping, let them drop. When they start to come back up, when you think they hit the bottom, that's when you start to dollar car average in into things that you find interesting or you think have a good future based on their business plan and the market they're in, their competitors. Speaking of which, what do you do when your competitor is beating that tail? <laughs> do you whine? Do you constantly just try to take your ball and go home? Do you do you sabotage the game? I mean, come on. I I, I want to cheer on everybody who's trying to take humanity further, but Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, they are just just sour grapes. So for the, for those who don't know, we, we have a plan that's called the Artemis Mission Project. I don't know, Artemis Project? I don't know. Mission to go back to the moon. And, you know, Apollo from, is this one? It's probably Roman. It's Roman and Greek. They use the same individuals to switch the names. But Apollo was the same in both. Artemis was Diana in... Was Diana was her name? I can't remember which was which. But either or. Apollo and Artemis are twins. And so Apollo was our missions to the moon back in the 60s and 70s. And so Artemis is going to be the twin sister is going to take a female and a person of color which they probably just make the same person to the moon and very soon again so this, this is why they named it that a lot of it you know we can get deep into is this you know ritual and, and the metaphysics of it but for now this just that's what it is right so the plan artemis has a plan we i talked a little bit about this uh some days ago about how we're going to create this space station around the moon and from there we're going to have spaceships that ferry down to the moon and back to the um, space station in orbit around the moon and then another spaceship to bring people back to from earth to that space station correct um and so nasa had given the contract to spacex to use starship to ferry people down to the moon. Now, of course, Starship, we talked about getting take 100 people, let alone two people. We were planning this. You know, we still do a 60s planning, like, well, let's put one person in orbit, two people down. You know, hey, we could have, uh, <laughs> we could send more than just a person of color and a woman to the moon. We could send a lot of different people. You know, we need to think big. Anyway, long story short, Blue Origin uh, was trying to get a deal for this. They did not get it. Now they keep suing and keep suing, saying, well, here, I'll just read it real quick. This is a very short article. NASA paused its contract with SpaceX to take astronauts back to the moon pending the initial outcome of a lawsuit filed by Blue Origin. The voluntary stay will expire on November 1st, two weeks after oral arguments are set to take place in the case, according to a timeline laid out Thursday in the U.S. Court of Federal Claims, Blue Origin, Amazon founders Jeff Bezos' commercial space venture, filed a complaint against the U.S. government over NASA's decision to award a $2.9 billion contract to Elon Musk SpaceX to build what would be the first lunar lander to carry astronauts to the moon since the Apollo era. The decision was previously the subject of a Blue Origin protest, which was denied by the Government Accountability Office on July 30th. Blue Origin filed his lawsuit under seal, but the company's previous bid protests disputed NASA's decision to award a single contract. Nash, NASA originally had hoped to fund two of the three teams to continue work on their human landing systems, which would have provided a backup option. Agency officials cited congressional budget limits as one reason for making only one 
Award. And also, SpaceX is only one building, so I'm getting it to work. And don't and don't trip. You ain't got to trip about nothing because at the end of the day, SpaceX is building Starship regardless, and and the capacity to go to the moon with Starship regardless of NASA money. You know, this is just the official. So they they not go stop and wait till November to see if they can start. They still go by the end. They go probably have put Starship in orbit. We'll see what uh what work with Blue Origin now. I'm, and I'm and I'm pushing for them. Blue Origin going to step up the pace though. You know, they got to definitely step up the pace and and get things um, moving a little faster over uh, in West Texas. With their, I don't know exactly where their headquarters will blow. I know they used to do some testing of their spacecraft over in West Texas, but they need to, to pick up the pace, for real. I didn't want to make a super long one today, but God dang, now we're going to try and talk about time crystals. All right, let's just get into it. Google time crystals could be the greatest scientific achievement of our lifetimes. Google Quantum Computing Labs may have created the world's first time crystals, time crystal inside a quantum computer. You see how all this stuff tie in together? What are time crystals? Well, let's get to that. Let's explain what they are. Time crystals are a new phase of matter. For the sake of sim simplicity, for the sake of simplicity, let's imagine a cube of ice. When you put a cube of ice in a glass of water, you're introducing two separate entities, the ice cube and the liquid water, to each other at two different temperatures. And so we, and we know they reached thermal equilibrium, which is the water will get a little bit colder and the ice will melt until they reach the same temperature and you have liquid water, right? Thermal equilibrium. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. An object at motion tends to stay at motion. Time crystals are different, and that's entropy, that the movement towards change of any system will always remain the same if there's no processes and, we're, and will increase if there's processes. So in other words, a match will over time degrade itself and no longer be good. But if you put fire to it, it will reach that state much faster, right? If you add a process to it, then entropy, that the, the change of that system will be reached much faster because you introduced a process. Time crystals, I'm trying to just get straight to where they try to explain it instead of trying to, um, you know, be cute with all the language. Going to snowflakes and, and time crystals are crystalline structures, a new phase of matter, simplified like having a snowflake that constantly cycles back and forth between two different configurations, um, like a seven point lacets and a 10 point lacets, but they don't lose energy. So they can survive energy processes without falling victim to entropy. So, in a nutshell i guess the way we can think of it as these are devices that can let's see if they make it even they can be in a state of having eaten a whole cake then cycle back to the state of having the cake and they can do this forever inside an isolated system more importantly they can do this inside an isolated system that means they can consume the cake and then magically make it reappear over and over again forever without using any fuel or energy so unlimited power Da, 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 da. Time crystals could be the miracle quantum computing needs. So we know we need quantum computers, but how do they help quantum computers? Okay, well, okay. Quantum computers can solve really hard problems. Unfortunately, they are brittle. It's hard to build them, hard to maintain them, hard to get them to do anything, and even harder to interpret the results they give. That's because of something called decoherence. And it's like, and we're going to talk about quantum mechanics at some point, but one thing that's set from quantum is that once you measure... You can only measure either the position or the momentum of a particle because once our intention to understand something at that level changes what we think we're looking at. Like things are happening at a level that we're, you know, our conscious, and this is where quantum mechanics get deep into consciousness because it appears that our intention of thought, even if we try to trick the system and do it from a point in the past or future, it will change the system. I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Look it up for yourself. That they've designed, they tried to look at this, the double slit experiment, and they tried to trick it to see if it was going to be a wave or particle. And 
um, it was like the experiment knew that it was it was it was that it was a that it was a ruse. <laughs> Computer bits in the quantum world, qubits, uh, the, 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 uh, decoherence with works a lot like entropy. Computer bits in the quantum world, qubits, share a funky feature of quantum mechanics that make them act differently when observed than when they're left alone. That's why I say they act, when you observe quantum processes, they act different. When, when we as scientists observe uh, a, a system down at the quantum scale, it acts differently knowing that we are paying attention to it at that time. I know it sounds crazy, right? Our, our intention can change matter. <laughs> but time crystals want to be coherent. So putting them inside a quantum computer and using them to conduct computer processes could potentially serve as incredibly important functions, ensuring quantum coherence. They're saying it's baby steps that we're still a long way, but if we're using time crystals, that can. So, and we'll talk about this when we talk about quantum computers. No, one of the problems is that there's a lot of error that they have to correct for in the algorithms with quantum algorithms. And so, if this kind of knock out some of that, I want to say natural error in the quantum computing systems using time crystals uh, in its construction. Some of the thing, hey, some of these times I, as I re reread and reread, I'm still learning this stuff myself. So my mind is constantly trying to understand the concepts and think the next steps and next steps. So if I'm seeming like at times I'm sitting there, I'm going through it <laughs> just because time crystal is one of those things. It's hard for me to one of the many things that we've discussed: the quantum computing to artificial intelligence that has been difficult to understand, but it's fun. I like I like thinking like this. Can we cure old age? Speaking of which, of more it used to be pie in the sky thoughts, but not so much anymore. Good news through vaccines, <gasps> healthy diets, and a great swath of medical innovations, human lifespans have roughly doubled in the last century or so. From an average of 35 years in 1900 to an average of more than 70 years today. But, 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 but wait, you want more? Of course, people are greedy. Perhaps understandably, you won't find yourself alone in seeking to stretch your life out that a bit further. In fact, one unrelenting idea frequently chased by Silicon Valley companies see us running upstairs well into our 90s has our brains being as fresh as a child's into the 12th decade of life and also envisions a future where USB enabled brains in jars live to see the extinction of the sun of our, our, our solar system, said the sun, the sun of our solar system. <laughs> you know, this just talks a lot about that how our bodies are seem to be designed even optimally to just make it 120 years before they wear out. Um, and we talk about, oh, but that in the animal kingdom, there are some animals that have seemed to develop. Now, are they evolutionary measures to defeat the ravages of, of the sun, cosmic radiation on our body? Um, oxygen damage. I don't know. Amongst, uh, I'm just, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, did they evolve the, this, you know, we'll talk about in a second, but the uh, naked mole rat, did they evolve the ability to last 30 years versus other rodents? Or, you know, hey, of course, what they, what some people say, well, where did they get it if it didn't evolve? Or was it, you know, created by the, the uh, divine intelligence? Did it just automatically have it? Uh, Extending, you know, things we don't know. Among the cast of extraordinary agers in the natural world are lobsters that have evolved an enzyme that protects the ends of DNA, DNA strands. We talked about that, uh, the uh, telomeres that are at the end of your DNA. They're like, I said that, forget the name for it, the, the caps on the, your on shoestrings to protect them from um, unraveling and, and becoming real um, frazzled out. That the lobsters, they, they, they have an enzyme that protects that even more so than would already exist. The bits 
most easily damaged during replication, lowly round words who seem to have something akin to a slow motion aging setting to get them through times when food is scarce. The naked mole rats who appear to have a knack for limiting the damage caused by problematic oxygen atoms known as free radicals. You know, they develop something that, that beat up free, uh, that, that help neutralize free radicals in their system. They have a habit of going rogue with animal cells and destroying DNA. Yeah, we know, you know, antioxidants. We use antioxidants, antioxidants. That's because of free radicals in our, get into our bloodstream and cells. So they're just saying, you know, how old is long enough? Can we cure it? You know, what is curing old age? Uh, it goes back to, and we'll talk about longevity here, of course, one of our uh, more deep dives into the mysteries, what is known, what is theorized, what is speculated, what conspiracies say, you know, we, we look at all of it and we don't judge. We try to find out, see what we have evidence for and what we don't follow it away, you know, and because some things we may know, think we know, and we, we, and we find there's more information in the future. And like I said, being wise, you will, you don't fight that. You'll you'll accept that the fact that you may you may have to change what you thought and believed, and that is kind of one of that um, emotional resiliency. What we discussed the other day, that flexibility to thought is kind of one of the most important things. The people who I meet who tend to have a lot of problems with depression and anxiety, very rigid, and they have to always I gotta be this way to everything. And I say, what's wrong with trying something different? But and we work through it and they get better, but long story. And at the end of it, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.